Hello everyone, this is Bhavik Choksi again. I hope you guys are doing great. We will continue with our amendment series and today we would be discussing the changes in the new study material for India S20 that is on government grants. To be specific, there are two changes as we have outlined. First is the changes in illustration number six uh, where the institute has made a sm small alternative treatment on uh, the government grants which are non-monetary grants and second they have added a new illustration uh, in your in the test your knowledge section which is a good uh, slightly good question which is on EPCG so we will quickly discuss these two points first of all uh, so let's uh, go to that part so first of all we go to the treatment of non-government non-monetary grants now these are grants on assets which are received uh, which are uh, either taken at a concessional price or free of cost the older standard, uh, uh, the older index, at least the older version, required you to record the assets at fair value only. Now, under the new uh, version, the institute has mentioned that we can record it at fair value. So, the old treatment continues. Uh, the, uh, you can, in these circumstances, the fair value of non-monetary asset is assessed and both the grant and the asset are recorded at fair value. But it also gives you an additional option that if you want, you can show it at the nominal value. Alternatively, an entity might measure these grants at nominal value. So basically, uh, for non-monetary grants which are received at either concessional rate or free, you can either record the asset at its fair value and take the difference to deferred grant account or you can record the asset at the nominal value uh, in which case there is no deferred grant account. So accordingly, your illustration 6 gets slightly modified where we get 5 acres of land uh, which are having a fair value of 1 lakh per acre and hence a total value of 5 lakhs at a nominal value of uh, uh, 50,000 uh, of 10,000 an acre which gives you a total value of 50,000. So uh, as we have solved earlier uh, the grant can be recorded at 4 lakh 50 you can take the asset at 5 lakhs so land account debit 5 lakhs to bank 50,000 to uh, 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 the deferred grant 4 lakh 50 or alternatively the land may be recognized at nominal value remember this is merely an alternative treatment in the exam if a non-monetary grant comes i would still advise you solve using the fair value method only uh, do not stick to the nominal value unless the question specifically tells you to do so i'm sorry okay this is on the first change uh, so not really an amendment but just an alternative treatment being added having said that i would still keep our solution uh, at question number six to remain the same only no change just an alternative uh, point added uh, the next part where we are trying to make uh, that we are trying to study the difference is in this third question uh, so we'll this is a new question uh, this is on epcg uh, if you once you go through the question you will realize that the institute is asking you that if there is an import concession that is availed in an epcg scheme the export promotion and capital goods scheme should that be accounted for as a government grant or not uh, so the epcg scheme so if we just read the question uh, quickly mnc has received a grant in the nature of exemption of custom duty exemption of custom duty on capital goods with certain conditions relating to export under the epcg scheme uh, whether the same is a government grant under india s20 uh, if yes how is the same accounted for uh, is it to be treated as a grant on asset or a grant on income okay first of all we'll quickly try to understand what is an epcg scheme under the epcg scheme uh, you will generally import capital goods from a foreign country and the purpose of importing these capital goods is to use them for manufacturing products which can be exported so for example you are buying a machine from germany which is having a value of 10 crores and is ideally subjected to a custom duty of 50 percent let us say at 50 uh, 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 at 50 percent that is about 5 crores so the government says that if you are buying this under the epcg scheme we will not charge you the customs duty of 5 crores in which case you end up paying only uh, the 10 crore amount you do not pay the customs duty of 5 crores uh, once that is uh, once uh, uh, you once you pay the 10 crores and you do not pay 5 crores uh, this is should this be treated as a grant or not is the question if it is an epcg scheme normally it is tied up to export obligations so the government says that if you want the benefit of uh, a waiver of export duty of import duty 
in let us say a period of five years you will have to import components uh, if you will have to export components worth let us say uh, uh, 20 crores so the government is trying to meet uh, or help uh, or uh, trying to increase the export in which case the concession in customs duty that you are getting is tied up to an export obligation that you have so you have to meet an export obligation of let us say 20 crores of sales in exports in order for you to be entitled to the epcg benefit what if you don't meet the obligation well you have to refund uh, 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 the duty so is it a government grant as per the standard yes this is a government grant how do you record this grant should it be recorded in the nature of asset or should it be recorded in the nature of income remember this grant helps you in meeting your export obligations and hence should be treated in the nature of income ideally which should be amortized in a ratio when the export obligations uh, are actually met so for example uh, if in our original example if we just try to do it uh, in a quick uh, numerical so let us say <coughs> Okay, let us say you have uh, a machinery which had an import cost of 10 crores on which you had an import duty which was waived off, which was exempted under the EPCG scheme. This is an import duty of 5 crores and hence uh, 5 crores will be treated as a deferred income. You will treat 5 crores into the deferred income account. Now, how will you amortize uh, this into, uh, into the PL account? Let us say the government requires you to meet an export commitment, an export commitment of let us say 10 crores. Uh, or let us say for simplicity 5 crores over a period of 5 years in which case you are expecting in year 1 you will have 1 in year 2 you will have a, a, a 1 in year 3 you will have 2 in year 4.5 and year 5.5 in which case this deferred grant of 5 will be amortized in the years when the actual export happens so this is a grant which is helping you to export and hence you treat it as a grant in the nature of income uh, and you should record it, uh, defer it to the PL in the in the ratio when the export goes to the PNL. The institute has also given an extra alternative that if the grant can be attributable to the capital asset, it can be read as an asset. Having said that, if you read the EPCG scheme properly, the first treatment is more uh, uh, more uh, suitable. So, if you read this question, two things: is EPCG uh, import duty concession a government grant? The answer is yes. How should you treat it? You should treat it as a grant in the nature of income, which should be deferred in the ratio when the export obligations go to the when the exports go to the PNL. Great. Uh, so that should be it on India's 20. If the video was helpful, please do like, share, subscribe and uh, I'll see you uh, tomorrow then. Thank you.